All right, good evening, everybody. David Paul with you, Chief Meteorologist here at KHOU 11 News. We're in the Weather Center. We're going to give you an update on Marco and Laura. First of all, Marco. Marco is in the process of falling apart. You have to squint to find the center, but it's right there. That's the center. All the rain and thunderstorm activity and the wind is over here. Florida, southern Mississippi, Alabama, they've had a bad weather day today. Meanwhile, New Orleans has had a beautiful weather day today. They're much closer to the center. That's because those upper level winds that we talked about the past couple of days have been overriding the surface winds and they've just blown all the bad wind and rain off to the northeast side, exposing the center of what's left of Marco. Marco's about to just downgrade to a tropical depression and just a remnant low as it moves this way and all the upper level winds are blowing the storms that way. And that has just ripped the thing apart. That's good news for New Orleans. It's not going to be a flood threat for them. They've got a little bit of flash flooding rain near Pensacola. That's about it. We talked about this last week and over the weekend, how a healthy storm wants to be vertically stacked. But when you get those upper level winds, that wind shear at 15, 20, 25,000 feet, it tilts the storm over. But in the case of Marco, it has literally just ripped it apart. And so Marco is done for weakening, not a threat to anybody except a little bit of rain. There's the forecast track depression, then just a remnant low as it heads toward the Texas Louisiana border going into Wednesday. This one for all intents and purposes is a non event for Louisiana and for we here in Texas. It will be Laura that is the main event. You can see as we set your bearings here, there's the, the center of Marco is here. All the weather is over from Jackson. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida to Atlanta, Georgia. Just amazing how those upper level winds can rip it apart. And then here's Laura, a much better organized system. Laura's not being sheared. That's one of the reasons why we think Laura is going to become cat two at least as she races out into the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. Laura's visible sat. It's a better looking counterclockwise rotation. And you can see the sun is beginning to set out here. So we're losing our visible satellite. But you can see some of the outer bands stretching out into the Gulf of Mexico already the center of the storm right here just south of the western tip of cuba winds have now increased to 65 miles an hour this is the 7 p.m intermediate advisory so 10 more miles an hour and it's going to be a cat one hurricane and i think that will happen after it crosses over cuba tonight and moves into the gulf of mexico central pressure is 998 millibars it's racing to west northwest now at 20 miles an hour that's a very fast speed for a tropical system to develop. It's almost as if it creates its own shearing mechanism. Forecast track first. Here it comes. Cat one, then cat two on Wednesday, then cat two somewhere between Galveston Bay and Vermilion Bay on Wednesday night into the wee hours of Thursday morning. It may be a midnight landfall somewhere on that line. That's the best forecast from the Hurricane Center right now. We are still in the far western edge of the cone. It's too close for comfort and we can't let our guard down. We have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. I will remind you there have already been some significant forecast track changes from the Hurricane Center over the past several days. I think we're honing in on a little better confidence in the forecast, but it's still not set in stone. So again, it's still possible that upper uh, the upper Texas coast and southeast Texas could be in play for a cat two going into Wednesday night, Thursday morning. One interesting thing, this is not going to be a Harvey repeat. The storm will be racing north at about 25 once it makes landfall, and that will put it on the coast Thursday morning at 1 a.m. and then in northern Louisiana by Thursday afternoon, 1 p.m. It's out of here taking the rain threat with it, but the wind threat and the surge threat will be magnified because of the rapid forward speed of Laura. Uh, here are the spaghetti plots, most of them taking it into Texas, Louisiana border or southwest Louisiana, Lake Charles sitting right there. Still a few of them do take it over to Houston Galveston, a couple of them take it to New Orleans. So everybody from New Orleans to Houston is watching this carefully and taking the storm very, very seriously. And I would urge you to do so as well. Plan as if you may have the power out for several days. If the storm were to come closer to Houston, plan on not being able to get out and get supplies for at least two or three days. Have it with you so that if we get some bad weather out of this, you don't have to get out and get in this when there's all types of debris and damage and power outages. Based on the current forecast track, this is the wind forecast. And again, this could change, but here's the way we stand right now with the strongest winds making landfall in southwest Louisiana near Lake Charles. This would be late Wednesday night, early wee hours Thursday morning. 
gusts to about 100 miles an hour in Lake Charles, and that's not quite even into the core of winds yet. What about Houston? Well, on this track, we would have north winds gusting to 20 or 22. Wouldn't be bad at all. Beaumont might get gusts to 45 or 50. They would have more significant chances for power outages there. You can see how the wind field really cuts off as you get over into the Houston area on this forecast. On the dirty side, it's a little worse. New Orleans would have gusts to 30. They would have some 45, 50 mile an hour gusts and some of the stronger rain bands on that type of forecast track. Then the storm races north and we're done by Thursday afternoon. The, the wind threat is out of here because it's just moving so quickly. It'll take the rain threat along with us. So this one is not going to sit on us. That's wonderful news. Okay, Houston, this evening, Slight chance for a stray shower through 7 o'clock. A beautiful tropical evening on this Monday evening. Great time to finish your hurricane prep preparations. Tuesday's forecast, if you haven't finished, Tuesday's a great day to go get a few supplies. Make sure if you're on the coast, everything is uh, battened down as you want it. I know that there are voluntary evacuations uh, issued by the local officials in Galveston County for a voluntary evacuation of the west end of Galveston Island below the seawall, the part that's more susceptible to surge flooding if that track were to shift more closer to you. We don't want anybody caught off guard. Check your local officials, khou.com. We've got all uh, evacuation uh, suggestions listed there. And also if you go to the hurricane section, you can see an evacuation route map as well. Here's the extended. This is subject to huge changes depending on that forecast track. What I'm gonna do for now is leave a 30% chance for a scattered shower on Tuesday. Tuesday's a fine day. Wednesday, we'll just have to wait and see what Laura does. If it goes to Southwest Louisiana, we won't get much rain at all, and I'll have to lower that rain chance for Wednesday and Thursday. If it comes closer to us, clearly we'll raise the rain chance and the wind and, and damage possibilities as well. And then after that, we're gonna go back to just summer-like weather as we head into Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Everything updated with a fresh forecast cone right at 10 o'clock. That's when the Hurricane Center updates it. So on the news tonight at 10 o'clock at KHOU 11 News, just leave it on 11. And uh, right, at, right after the convention coverage ends, which should be right at, right at 10 or, or just a little bit after 10, we'll, we'll start right off the newscast with the latest uh, tropical and hurricane forecast from the Hurricane Center and what it means for we here in Houston. We'll see you at 10 after the convention on 11 News. Hi, this is the Wednesday afternoon update on Hurricane Laura. As always, the thoughts here are just mine and in making decisions, preparations about how to prepare for or evacuate from Hurricane Laura along the Louisiana coastline, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local weather service office, and your local emergency management officials. As they have local scale information, I'm just here to provide a big picture analysis of the storm. As we look out over the Gulf uh, this afternoon, we see an unfortunately ominous picture of a very mature Hurricane Laura with an eye that is now clearing out on satellite imagery. You can see it rotating rapidly there here on the one minute visible, barreling northwestward now toward the southwest Louisiana coastline near or just east of the Texas-Louisiana border. This storm has been rapidly intensifying since sometime during the middle of the night last night. We've had a deepening rate of about two to three millibars per hour since that time. The current recon plane is in there finding continuing pressure falls down three millibars between the two passes it's done already at about 950 millibars now. Maximum winds in the northeastern eyewall have been observed at about 140 miles per hour from the aircraft and winds of at least 100 to 120 miles per hour are evident on the other sides of the eye wall as well, even the western and southern side, which are typically a little bit weaker. So this makes uh, Laura a Category 4 hurricane and further intensification seems to be occurring and may remain possible through the time of landfall. If there's anything that's going to arrest this intensification trend, it will be the onset of westerly wind shear that is expected to begin around now. You can actually see evidence of that on the visible satellite. Some of the mid-level clouds, not the outflow expanding this way, but underneath that, some of these clouds are coming out of the northwest. That is because of the westerly flow 
developing a loft underneath the outflow that is now acting on the core of Laura and given it enough time will eventually start disrupting the core but at this point it is probably too late to reduce Laura's intensity in any appreciable way and at this point whatever the exact intensity is at landfall it's not really going to matter to you because whether the wind is 120 or 150 we're talking about potentially catastrophic damage from storm surge flooding that is already baked into the cake here. This is likely to be an unprecedented historical event for this portion of the Northwest Gulf Coast. The kind of storm surge flooding that is coming here has not been seen in the historical record and could exceed that of Hurricane Rita in 2005 in many locations, especially here near and just east of Lake Charles, Louisiana. This is not something to mess with. If you're in an evacuation zone due to storm surge flooding, you need to heed those evacuation orders to leave. There is still some time to do so as of the making of this video. This is the radar picture from a Mark Nissenbaum's site showing that the core of Laura remains offshore for the moment. Now we do have some outer bands that have already moved onshore with squally weather and those could potentially contain tornadoes uh, some at some point over the next few hours. So do be aware that very quickly spinning up tornadoes with short warning time may occur. So keep an eye on your phone and your weather radio for emergency alerts if you're preparing to leave. And uh, if you're in this flood zone here, you can see this on the forecasted map from the NHC, all of the water that is expected to come from the ocean inland as far as 30 miles from the coastline here all the way up into Lake Charles and all along this portion of the Louisiana coastline from the border down toward the Mississippi River Delta. Again, this could be the worst storm surge flooding event in the historical record for this portion of the Gulf Coast. You should be taking this extremely seriously. NHC's wording here is about as dire as it gets, calling this storm surge, quote, unsurvivable. This is used as a word for a very good reason. The power of water is nothing to mess with. Even the National Weather Service forecast office in Lake Charles has evacuated their own building. That should give you a clue how serious the situation truly is. If we look at the water vapor satellite picture here again, we can see the trough over Texas and Oklahoma. Apologies for the flashing frames there. This is going to now turn Laura just a little bit more toward the right as it moves toward the coast. And now it's basically wobble watching at this point. The track is pretty dialed in to this part of the coastline that we've been talking about for the last day or day and a half. This is again the radar showing that northwestward motion and at this point wobbles will matter a lot in terms of who gets the eye wall at the coast and the strongest winds and then especially for Lake Charles in particular whether or not the eye comes up just to your west or just to your east could play a huge role in what the maximum water level is in that particular region. But keep in mind in terms of raw wind impacts, this is much bigger than just the eye wall. And you can see from the recon observations that everything in purple here around the storm center is capable of giving you hurricane force wind gusts, translate that to the coast, and you have a very wide region that can be impacted by potential wind damage and power outages. This trajectory at the moment is going to keep the Houston Metro out of the eyewall, which is good news for you in Harris County, but do not assume that you cannot get hurricane force wind gusts potentially on the back side of this. Not all of this part of the core has even come onto the radar screen yet, but this side of the storm is also ferocious and we could see winds sustained over 50 miles per hour in portions of eastern Texas with gusts over hurricane force over 80 miles per hour in some of these counties. So we are still talking about a significant storm here. Fortunately, you guys will be on the offshore flow part of the storm to the west of the eye when it makes landfall. So storm surge values in Galveston Bay are going to be lower than they otherwise would be if the storm was coming in closer. So this is a tremendously close a call for Houston. Unfortunately, not so for your neighbors to the east here as southwest Louisiana again will be receiving a hit from the strongest storm that we have seen in the historical record for this part of the coastline. 
This is the NHC official forecast showing the warnings currently in place here. These red warnings are for wind only. The storm surge warnings extend even farther east along the Louisiana coastline. As you can see, the large wind field in orange here is all 40 miles per hour or stronger. All that wind on this east side is pushing water on shore, and lots of Louisiana is flood prone on the southern coast. So we are expecting storm surge flooding again to be the most life-threatening hazard here, along with inland flooding from rainfall that is expected along a whole swath uh, well inland of the coast. And keep in mind that since Laura is a faster moving storm, it is going to bring strong winds and rainfall even well inland from the coast. This is not just a coastal event. Power outages, wind damage, and inland flash flooding will be a problem even well away from the landfall point here. So just remember that going forward in your preparations. You still have time if you're more inland. If you're along the coast, if you haven't left yet, you got to go now. If you're in a flood prone region, uh, water is nothing to mess with. Wind, you can survive in a sturdy structure. Ocean water flooding into your building, not always the case. So make sure you leave, contact your friends and family if they haven't left yet and they're in a region that is at risk from this storm surge threat. Here's another look at that picture showing you where that water is going to be. You can look at this map yourself at hurricanes.gov to see where your local address uh, is and what the inundation is possible there. Again, just stay safe. This is probably going to be the last video update you get from me. You can always follow my Twitter, but at this point, this is about local impacts. The forecasting phase of this storm is coming to an end, and I provide a bird's eye view of the storm, but I can't get to a local detail that your emergency management officials can from your county, your city, and your local National Weather Service office. They can give you more uh, pertinent details than I can for your particular location. Please do keep up with them and be safe, everyone. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hours for this to weaken below hurricane strength, and you're going to take hurricane force winds sustained inland about 100 miles. And even after that and beyond that, the tropical storm force winds with hurricane force gusts, you know, over land, Steph, this, the gusts are a lot stronger compared to the sustained than the, the gust relative to the sustained over water. So they can remain very gusty over land. And, and in Rita, a lot of people died on the weaker side of the system in Texas from trees falling. So it's a very dangerous inland wind event. And I want to talk about the wind because Dr. Nab, I have an anemometer here with me. And you know, right now, obviously, this is not official observation, but where I'm standing, our winds are, you know, gusting around 20 miles an hour. So I want to give people some perspective on just how strong a wind is that's 150 miles an hour or 120. I think people really underestimate what a wind, if someone looks at this, they might say, oh, that's probably blowing at 40 miles an hour. But, you know, where I am, again, unofficial, Dr. Nab, you know, we're gusting around that 20 mile an hour range. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, up and down for a little while longer, but the center of circulation, whether it passes right over you or very close to you, is about, oh, five hours away. And so that's when you would get your strong guest winds, probably on the eastern eye wall. But it will be going downhill very quickly uh, in the next uh, two or three hours as you get into the northern outer bands. But then when the eye wall comes in, you know, give it uh, three to four hours, uh, that northern eye wall, it will get really nasty really quickly. And I think, unfortunately, that this is going to take a path such that it pushes that water right up the Kalkasu River into Lake Charles. All right, so that's where we are. So behind us is the Calcasieu River, and it goes all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico. Let's talk about that water rise, because that's something else that, you know, this doesn't come in uh, like a tsunami, like a big wave. You know, that water goes up, but it does go up very quickly. And I think that's what really catches a lot of people off guard, Dr. Nav, is just how quickly that surge is going to be pushing up. Yes, and it, it will... It will uh, David Paul dodging a bullet. You know, we've been saying, are we going to take a direct hit, a glancing blow? As you said earlier, better than we expected, no blow. Oh, much better than we expected. And it, it's weird. Every storm has its own little personality, and this one has a personality quirk that's giving us a much better than expected outcome, at least here in Houston and Galveston. Winds are at 150. This is a powerful, dangerous hurricane. Uh, we've got gusts to 185 out there, swimming north-northwest at 15 miles an hour. It's bearing down on the Louisiana coast. It's going to make landfall in a couple hours near midnight after midnight right here in Louisiana. Lake Charles will take the hardest hit, and so will Cameron Perry.
Harris, then it'll be a cat too as it moves up into central western Louisiana and far east Texas. Still a 110 mile an hour hurricane by the time we get into Thursday morning and then it races off into the mid Mississippi Valley as we head into Friday and the weekend. Here's the infrared enhanced satellite. So what you're looking at is the top level of the storm. This is what it looks like up at 45 50,000 feet and we look at this because we want to see where the brighter colder cloud tops are. It indicates where we're getting uh, the, the internal structure of the storm really getting organized. However, usually when you see an area like Galveston underneath that central dense overcast, you'd expect to be getting at least tropical storm force conditions there. But that's not happening there tonight. Even though Laura has max winds of 150 moving north northwest at 15, it is a very small hurricane. So that was up top. This is what's happening down at the surface. These are the raindrops seen by the radar and you can see the rain shield just cuts off. It's a very small hurricane, very, very small wind field. The only place you've got damaging winds are within these rain bands and because we're getting none of them, we've got some dry air at the mid levels here that's zapping the rain chance on the west side. This is going to pass by without us really having much to notice except for that dangerous surf on the Galveston coast. That is the only real issue down there and Highway 87. Here's the extrapolation. I've got the western edge of the rain shield to mark by that line. It's moving north northwest just over the next few hours. You can see how this is going to go. It's going to completely miss Houston Galveston. Very small wind field. So from the eye wall, only 40 miles out do hurricane force winds extend to the right. Only 24 miles out from the eye wall do the hurricane force winds extend to the left or the west side. The orange and yellow are all just tropical stor storm force winds. And you can see as we go toward midnight tonight, well, the bad stuff in Louisiana, Houston 22 mile an hour gust if we get a rain band, 31 mile an hour gust. If we get a rain band, which I don't think we will, we really end up with a very quiet outcome here in Houston Galveston, better than could have been expected when you consider it will be very, very bad down toward Lake Charles and Calcasieu Parish and folks down there on Folly Beach are going to get some very uh, devastating conditions there over the next several hours. And then by 830 in the morning, it's weakening, but still wind gusts near 70 in northern Louisiana while we just have a breezy and dry start to tomorrow. So Houston tonight. Breezy, but staying mostly dry. Galveston, dangerous surf, indeed. Highway 87 is flooded and impassable. That's typical of these systems. Winds, I mean, maybe we'll get to 25. We're going to have to get a rain band to get a gust to 30 to 40, which I doubt we'll have, which means the power outage threat is just about zero. The rain is all going to be in Louisiana. Models have it completely dry here tonight. Amazing. The surge is all in southwest Louisiana, where near the center and just to the right, they're going to get a 10 to 20 foot surge. We we're getting a two, three, four foot rise in tides down there with the waves in Galveston and they're crashing against seawall and kind of uh, the, the spray is coming over, but the waves are not coming over seawall boulevard uh, overnight tonight. Then breezy, but dry an amazing outcome for being so close to such a powerful hurricane. But as I said, everyone has its own personality and this one just has such a tiny wind field. I think we have a chance for a scattered shower tomorrow afternoon at 40%. The extended 90 tomorrow back to mid 90s and summer continues Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We did hope for the best, planned for the worst. And this time around, it has worked out for us, guys. It certainly you. has. Thank you, David. Up to 90 miles per hour, per hour. It was very, very difficult to stand up and through here. Plus, you've got a lot of trees around and a lot of roof shingles. So there's going to be flying debris uh, everywhere out and through here. So again, we'll do our best to show you what goes on. I had somebody ask me one time, Jim, why do you stand out in these things? I said, honestly, because if I'm going to ask somebody to leave or be a part of that equation with the weather enterprise, I want to at least be able to take people through it and show them why they left. All right, to show them, you know, just how strong the storm can be and the different aspects of it. So that's really it. Otherwise, guys, we will continue to watch Laura for you uh, on final approach. There'll be a wobble this way. There'll be a wobble that way. But eventually it is coming toward southwest Louisiana in what is going to be one of the strongest hurricanes to ever hit this area, if not more than likely the strongest with record setting storm surge and water rise. With Domino. Currently in our area, 78 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, mostly clear, low 75, winds light and variable. Thursday.
Tuesday, except for a few afternoon clouds, mainly sunny. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 96. Thursday night, a few clouds from time to time. Low, 77. Winds west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. And welcome back to our continuing coverage of Hurricane Laura. Very dangerous Category 4. It's going to come in as a Category 4. Uh, no question about that. It's just how far inland and how high is that water going to get. That is something that's on everybody's mind. And as a matter of fact, I just got a text from my good buddy uh, Rob Macedo, who's a meteorologist up uh, in, in, in New England, and he works, uh, obviously, uh, with the Skywarn Spotter Group up on these. These are all the amateur operators. And they're, when, 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 when the cell phones go down, by the way, guys, you're going to wish you knew an amateur uh, radio operator, okay? Because they're, they're the ones that get out. But here's the deal. Um, he talked about something uh, some, from social media here. A homeowner who was watching his home camera saw water across Brant Street in Holly Beach, which is in camera Parish, as we talked about, uh, before uh, they lost power and the camera went out. So here comes the water. It's already coming in. We've seen water rise already uh, close to three feet, I think, in some spots. Calcasieu Pass now sustained 46, gusting to 58 miles per hour there, gusting to 63 uh, as well with that as well. That was the peak gust. And um, no question about it here, guys. This thing's going to come in, and things are going to go downhill in a hurry. All right, speaking of going downhill, let's see how things are doing in Lake Charles. Again, I'm at La Berge. So we're back here, uh, you know, near the, you know, across the lake from the oil refineries, which, by the way, they evacuated. I was talking to a couple of gentlemen who were in um, in the Laberge, and they were saying, hey, we didn't even get evacuated for Rita. So they're very concerned about uh, the refineries back there. All right, they've got them um, uh, evacuated as well out of there. So that's great news. We don't want anybody, obviously, uh, in that area, but obviously bad news for the refineries because you're talking about a heck of a water rise over there. But here's Peak. He's at Lake Charles. Uh, with his camera, I think he said he's got a max gust now of about 38 miles per hour. So with that in mind, certainly, uh, we know even where he is, things are going to go downhill. And where he is, wa water could be uh, up to the side of his car. Now, he's not going to be there when that happens, all right, because we know better. We know to get him back here. But uh, we just want to show you what it's like out there uh, right now. It's been raining now pretty steadily. We've had tropical storm force gusts uh, in Lake Charles. We're still out of the northeast, so that's why we're a little blocked here from the wind, if you will, but when those winds come a little bit more southerly, uh, which they will with the center going to our west, we'll get the full brunt of that here in the front of uh, La Berge, which uh, I, I can't thank these guys enough. They've gone out of their way to help us out, so they've been wonderful, uh, and I hope uh, you know everybody is hunkered down, everybody has heeded the advisories to get out of harm's way uh, when they could. You can hear it when we talked to John Bell Edwards, the governor, earlier today. He was very concerned about the people that stayed behind, and I'm sure he just shook his head when he heard the fact that 155 people, 150 people actually stayed behind uh, in Cameron, Louisiana. So that's the big deal there. Again, just light rain uh, here. It was actually a little dry, believe it or not. The grounds were a, a little dry in through here, so they could use a little rain, but we don't need 10, 15 inches of rain because, as Dr. Nav was talking about earlier, the fact that you could easily get uh, that kind of water, which is trying to get to the Gulf of Mexico, at the same time the surge and the wind are pushing in and pushing it up, that means we could even have a higher water rise uh, as a result of that rainfall. So all, all the rain gets added to the equation here, unfortunately. That's just not added to the, to the uh, inundation equation. All right, Steph, uh, let's talk a little bit about this. So I talked about where we are in the front of La Berge, and, you know, we're pretty high up and through here. Uh, tell everybody where you were, are and your plan, if you will, as that water starts to come up where you are, I think, behind uh, the Golden Nugget, yeah. and then uh, up toward the front. So Jim and I, um, you know, we're, we're, we could walk to each other. Uh, we're, you know, but in two separate hotels that are next to each other. And I'm on the back side of the hotel. The Calcutta River is behind me, and I'm watching that, okay? Because we're expecting that surge to be about nine feet here. And Jim, we do have very easy access to go right up. Uh, there's stairs right in front of me. My crew is already elevated, as a matter of fact. And so we're going to watch that water behind me uh, with a very keen eye, and we will be able to get in and get higher 
conversation. The truth of the matter is it does not matter. That's just going to be for historical data. We're at 150. A cat five is 157. That is really not going to make a huge difference in the type of damage that we will get with a land falling strong cat four or a weak cat five. Oh, oh. I might have lost okay. Jim. I might have lost oh, him. We can go to sorry, Dr. Yeah, Nav sorry, if yeah. I've lost. I think no, 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 we're still, we're still here. We're still here. Oh, that's uh, all right. I just did. I, I was, I was just wondering if you were going to take us to break because we only had a little bit of time. So I was talking to the producer. Well, uh, so did you? Ask, if you ask me something, go ahead and do it again. I was just saying, Jim. You know, strong cat four to weak cat five. We're only going to make that differential for the record books. It's not going to matter the type of damage you get with 150 versus 157. Yeah, not not much at all in, in terms of that. You know, obviously it's status. And, you know, remember, there's always reanalysis potentially after uh, the fact that where the, where the Hurricane Center goes back in. And by the way, uh, if you want a little good read tonight, go back and read the National Hurricane Center's description of what happened with Rita. Their full report on that, our very own Dr. Rick Knapp was a part of three meteorologists who wrote that. Daddy, what's that big moving house thing? Now, uh, Charles Peak back there. This is where we were this morning, uh, you know, right on the water, okay, and across the water, of course, are the refineries. But you can look, you're looking over to where Steph is uh, at the Nugget, okay? That's how far away we are uh, from each other, and that's why her shot, you know, she's dealing with all that on the back side of this thing uh, with those northeast winds right now. So, no question, uh, that's where it is obviously rougher, and it is not a true testament of, of what we're getting. So, let's actually get it, an idea of what that looks like being in it. Steph, uh, we, we just showed Peak shot. He's looking over toward you right now. Looks like you're getting hammered back there pretty good. And we're not even remotely into the teeth of this yet. Yeah, we... No, we're not at all, Jim. I mean, we're still several hours. And look what's happened. Just from our last live shot until now, I'm trying to get a wind observation. I'll be doing these. The highest I've seen so far is 33. But I've got to tell you, you can see the sheets of rain, you know, whipping off the building with the wind. Behind me is the Calcasieu River. And you see that water. And the waves are starting to come up here. And we're watching this very closely. And I don't want anyone to be concerned about us. My crew is actually already elevated. They are up from where I am standing and I can easily run up these stairs and we can get higher and that's what we anticipate doing uh, once that water is going to push in with this storm and the winds they've died down a little bit now but wait until we get into that eye wall I will not be able to stand out here it'll be absolutely impossible so things are going to continue to deteriorate through the night now is the time that everyone needs to be safe um, you know for those people that stayed behind Hopefully that they have, uh, you know, axes and whatnot to get out on their roofs. We saw that happen. Uh, you know, Rita, Katrina, where people were stuck and had to chop through and get out onto their roofs.
stayed behind and may have a, a you know one-story home that they have to get on their roof of because the water is so high. Uh, I want you to show me one person, just one, who can hold on with 150 mile an hour wind on their roof. I just want to meet. I want to meet that person. I really, I really do. So you're 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 not in, in good a good situation here. You can't exactly. All right, uh, guys. I want to bring in Dr. Rick now. Big difference though, isn't it, between Steph and my shot? Uh, she's on the back side. She's exposed to the northeast wind. Uh, the, the hotel's blocking me for the moment. The winds are going to come around a little bit more out of the southeast, which is going to expose us uh, again in this area where I'm standing. So, Dr. Nab, uh, I think a few viewers are kind of looking at this and saying, okay, this is interesting. If the pressure now is 937 millibars with, uh, with Laura, and the pressure with Rita was 937 millibars, why is the wind with Laura 150 miles per hour and the wind with Rita was only 115 miles per hour. Yeah, pressure That's and max you. winds don't completely line up. Rita had been a cat five over the central Gulf of Mexico with the winds 180 miles an hour. When it weakened, the pressure didn't come all the way back up. And what happened is Rita ended up being a larger hurricane. Its hurricane force winds extended out more than 80 miles as opposed to Laura's hurricane force winds about 60 miles. So Rita was a larger hurricane, one of the lowest pressures for a Cat 3 ever on record. Center and the coast is the northern eye wall. And that is you know, within an hour from coming on shore. So, Steph, that's why uh, you, with about an hour's notice, they issued this extreme wind warning uh, for the eye wall to come ashore within the next hour. And then that northern eye wall is maybe two and a half to three hours away from Lake Charles. So, you got a lot to deal with, and it's going to be getting worse and worse here in the next couple of hours. Okay, Dr. Nab, let's talk about some of these cities, these specific cities. You know, as you're watching this position, and I know they can wobble, and this is something we will have to watch very closely because a little shift this way or that way will make a huge difference in what happens to someone's property. But what are some of the cities that could sit in the eye wall or experience any part of the eye wall with this system as it pulls ashore? Well, certainly on the northern side, that northern eye wall, Cameron and Holly Beach are going to get the northern eye wall. That is within the hour, and they're, they are the first in line there that's in the extreme wind warning. Now, with the uh, center of circulation still going north northwestward, it probably is going to pass just west of Lake Charles. So it could work out, you know, unfortunately, that Lake Charles never gets into the eye. You get the northeastern eye wall, you get the eastern eye wall, you get the southeastern eye wall, and there's no break. And I don't know if anybody in Lake Charles has really ever experienced anything quite like that. The eye wall of a major hurricane for a few hours, you got to shelter like for a tornado. I mean, seriously, we could lose lives if people don't do that. Okay, so as this is coming ashore, you've got the wind and you've got the water. How much time will you have that combo of the highest surge and the strongest winds? And how long will that surge stay up once the storm, the, the, the strong winds pass? How long will it take for it to go down? Well, for it to completely drain, it could take many hours to a, a day or two because it, there's going to be so much rainwater mixed in there as well. But uh, trying to to, uh, to figure out when the highest water rise would occur due to storm surge and how long that'll take to drain, well, let's take a look first that it's already four feet above normally dry ground on the northern eye wall and you know three feet or so on the coast down there. But it's only a foot and a half or so of rise in Lake Charles right now. But when you look at the timing of the onshore push, it looks like that we're going to be dealing with uh, you know, the high tide around 6 a.m. local time, but around you know, 2 yeah. to 3 a.m. local time, that's when the, the southerly push will really begin in earnest, and it will last well past the eye wall passing you past sunrise. So there could be a good six-hour period there, you know, either side of high tide, where you've wow. got your highest storm surge flooding, but because of the rainfall-induced flooding being added to that, it's going to take a long time for all this water to drain stuff. It could be flooded in Lake Charles for yeah. a day or more. Okay, Dr. Nab, now going inland, because I do want to service those in the Shreveport, Little Rock, even Memphis, up to southern Missouri over to Kentucky. What should they expect to experience and when? The, the rainfall is going to be a big, big issue up in that area. Now, in northern Louisiana, it's not going to be too much longer before they start experiencing
facing the winds of tropical storm force. And in Arkansas, when they wake up tomorrow, they're going to start dealing with tropical storm conditions. And sustained tropical storm force winds could you know, be occurring in uh, places like Little Rock you know, when we get into uh, tomorrow. But after that, you know, and that could cause a whole lot of power outages, but after that, you're going to be dealing with strong winds that could at least be due just to the gustiness of the storm itself. But Steph, we're going to have a, a big tornado risk uh, along into the east of the center, and that could happen in places like Mississippi and Tennessee and even Alabama. So a lot of people are going to get a lot of wind out of this uh, when we get into Friday. All right, Dr. Nav, we appreciate all your expertise, of course. Former Hurricane uh, Center director. Uh, it works out, but our winds are going to come around, guys. As a matter of fact, that eye wall right now, just pop up the radar here quick, uh, is, is just about 10 miles from the coast, which means it's about 40 miles from us here in Lake Charles. Now, that's the worst of the weather. Now, one thing we just saw issued by the National Weather Service, and remember, you know, Brownsville's doing Lake Charles' work because Lake Charles evacuated their office because of potential inundation at the office. Okay, so uh, it's a high wind warning. And this is kind of new, uh, a little bit new to, to, to a lot of us. And Dr. Nav, you can refresh me a little bit as to where uh, and, and when this was actually implemented. It may have been, it just escapes me right now um, due to vapor lock uh, out in these things for, for a few days. But w w what does it mean? I, isn't it, it's kind of a ramp up of, hey, this is where you can't go outside. You're likely going to lose power, uh, potentially even cell service as well, right? Well, the real reason for the extreme wind warning is that the strong winds of a major hurricane of an eye wall can do tornado-like damage and can cause damage to the point where if you are not sheltering like you should for a tornado, then your structure is picking up pretty steadily. Now remember, we're still a couple hours away from the worst of the weather, and it could be devastating for Lake Charles, Sulphur. We're going to look at all these cities because we could stay in the eye wall the entire time. No break.
center of circulation is about an hour away from making landfall at the coastline. And then it's about a two hour trip for the center of circulation from making landfall and making its closest pass probably just west of Lake Charles. So what that means is with the eye wall onshore in the Cameron area right now, you're a couple hours away from the northern and northeastern eye wall being over Lake Charles. But then, because it's probably going to pass to the west of there, Lake Charles might clip the eye a little bit, but largely will be in the eastern eye wall as the center passes closest by there in about three hours. But then three, four hours from now, you'll be in the southeastern eye wall. So it is going to be a several hour ordeal in Lake Charles. And, you know, again, the center of circulation is not going to pass by you for another three hours, and it's going to make landfall on the coast in about an hour. And they issued this extreme wind warning uh, about an hour in advance of this northern eye wall coming ashore uh, to get people to shelter. Treat it like a tornado. That's what the extreme wind warning is about. Now, currently, that's in effect until 1 a.m. Central Time. However, that is going to have to be extended because about 1 a.m. Central Time, the center of circulation will be making landfall. So, Jim, it's going to be a few more hours where people need to take that life-saving shelter like a tornado, lowest level, most interior room with a helmet on. Hey, Dr. Navis, we like to do this thing. I want you to call landfall. Uh, I'm thinking Cameron, Louisiana. Uh, I think we could get in the eye here in Lake Charles, believe it or not. It's really yeah, coming north. Maybe. It's a big eye, so uh, a part of that certainly is a possibility in through here. But here's the deal. We just had a weather flow station come in at 101 mile per hour wind gust. Okay? 100 mile per hour wind gust. Uh, 101, actually. 35,000 in Louisiana alone now without power. There's a potential here near Cameron, for example, 15 to 20 feet. That's into the second floor. The second story is going to have water into those levels. If people are still there, they are in big, big trouble. And we are watching that kind of event uh, move through southern Louisiana uh, right now. It will be towards Lake Charles towards, say, 6 in the morning or so with the worst of that uh, timing uh, for the Lake Charles area. So, Steph, it's just ramping up. From here on out, you're going to watch that river behind you continue to climb.
so they're about 20, oh gosh, 28 miles as the crow flies from where we are right here uh, to our south. So you know, do the timing, uh, you know, another hour and a half or so, we're going to get into that as well. We've already gusted to pretty close uh, to hurricane force. Calcasieu Pass has been in the 80s as well, and we continue to see power outages really ramp up here. Uh, at last count, that was over 10 minutes ago, we had 35,000 just in Louisiana alone, and we know those are going to ramp up a big time uh, in through here. So uh, again, Steph, Steph, let me ask you this. E even though you're getting hammered there, has there been any kind of a, a change in the wind? Do you notice a change in the direction at all, is there, or is it just basically due northeast at you? Yeah.
tremendous wind, especially off, uh, away from the parking lot, away from really where I could give my cameraman enough protection, but you can certainly see it uh, going on behind me here. We've had wind gusts in the Lake Charles area uh, up to 90 miles per hour, okay? Airport hasn't been that high. Uh, they're going to get higher because they're on the south side. We've got a, uh, you know, weather station uh, certainly uh, in and around uh, Lake Charles that we can watch and look at. We've had winds there over 70 miles per hour as well. So everything is up now into this hurricane range uh, and higher. Okay, so we're getting, you know, Cat 1, Cat 2 gusts. And certainly the biggest gust that we've seen down in Cameron, uh, 116 miles per hour. That's a Cat 3 gust there uh, in Cameron, Louisiana, where they're just about to get in the eye. You can see that on the radar. All right, so does... Do we get a landfall in Cameron, or is it going to be to the west at Holly Beach? Because remember, this thing's still doing a little jog. And of course, Holly Beach is off the, to the west there, uh, and, and they, they could easily get it as well. But remember, it's got to be the center of that eye that comes across that point for it to be an official landfall. And that's certainly uh, something that's coming up very, very shortly here. And the Hurricane Center puts that out. They'll tell you when you get uh, a landfall point through here. The big question is here for Lake Charles, do we get another jog to the west? and keep us in the eye wall. Okay, so northern eye wall comes in and eastern eye wall, uh, but do we get enough of a jog where we may even get in the eye a little bit uh, here in Lake Charles? That's absolutely a possibility. But the water continues to pile up uh, in many of the rivers in through here. Now remember too, the rain that's coming down is trying to get out into the Gulf of Mexico. That's the low point, right? So that's filling up as you're seeing the wind push the water back up the river. So that's adding to the water rise uh, that's coming up and through here. All right, Steph, uh, you've had the shot of the night uh, on the backside of the Golden Nugget there. Let's talk about that and, and what you're seeing uh, just really in the past. We've had about a five-minute break from you. Uh, what have you seen change? Because things can change quick. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Jim. The wind has been getting consistently worse. There's more and more times where I'm getting kind of thrown off balance uh, type of a thing. The water behind me here, the Calcasieu River, uh, it's coming up. We still have plenty of beach here, so I'm not concerned about the surge at this moment. Um, but we've been getting rain nonstop here. You see how we get a little bit of a breather, and then it's, you know, hold on to your hat. Literally, quite literally, hold on to your hat. I want to give you some numbers here. Uh, Cameron, Louisiana, where the eye wall, by the way, uh, landfall is imminent, and it's the center circulation at landfall. 114 at Cameron, we've had 81 here, a gust. And by the way, hurricane force is 74 miles an hour. Some numbers for you for power outages. Almost 70,000 in Louisiana. With that power, Texas at 13,000. That power, you see how it kicks up like this? Jim, I don't know if you can actually see my shot or not. But I got a breather for two seconds, and then you get some very strong gusts and consistent stuff here. I mean, we have no shelter where I'm located. I mean, it's literally coming right down the boardwalk, right off the water. My crew, however, is elevated, and my photog has no rain gear on. That's how protected he is right now. So, and so it's really a different so shape. What's amazing is I'm on the back side of our hotels. You're on the front side. And so I just wanted to let everyone know the conditions at their home. Mid-Atlantic. 
So Virginia, North Carolina, maybe even Southern Pennsylvania. Keep an eye on this thing. Daddy, what's that big moving house thing? It's a boat. Right around the eye, 
right now in some of those outer areas. Uh, you get all the way out here towards Basile, towards Lafayette, towards New Iberia, all under tornado warnings for fast moving spin up tropical tornadoes. But what we're watching here in that original question from Steph, what is actually the eye wall? Technically, it is that border right between, right, right as you exit the eye and the clearing and go back into that uh, wall of clouds, that, you know, stadium effect of the eye. But it does have a thickness. It's not what you're in in Lake Charles yet. Lake Charles, you're in the bands, you're in the heavy rain, you're not quite into that eye wall. It's not exactly a, you know, that just a, you know, paper thin. It, it, think about walls of a building, there's some thickness to it. The eye wall is considered to have some thickness as well. So you're through that eye wall, through the northern eye wall in Cameron, about to get into the eye and the calming, and then landfall, Stephanie, will take place after the center of the eye moves in.
right now, and gosh, it is just about to landfall. I mean, this is moments away, just outside of Cameron. Again, what we're waiting for is the center of the center. Does that mean we're done? Absolutely not. That is just midway for Cameron, and it's just beginning up the road where Stephanie was just standing and getting bat you know battered around is in Lake Charles. This is the northern edge of that eye wall and about to come uh, you know through the radar site that's right here, and then you've got a little bit more to go for Lake Charles. So, gosh, it could take another hour or so before the winds actually peak in Lake Charles. And this is a problem because there's a little bit of a jog off to the side, which means Lake Charles may stay in that, uh, you know, in that eye wall the entire time, not get a break uh, for the eye at all. Now, we want to go over to Beaumont now. Beaumont is also seeing the winds increasing. Our own Reynolds Wolf is there. Reynolds, gosh, this is just a, an a unbelievable event for the Louisiana coastline right now. Absolutely, but what's terrifying is this really doesn't come as a surprise to us. We expected all this to happen, and sure enough, it's unfolding as we speak. One big issue that we're going to have this evening, too, we have a bevy of tornado warnings which could be popping up across the landscape. We have landfalling systems, as you know very well, folks. It's not out of the question to have tornadoes. Now, the issue that you have at nighttime, obviously, you can't see them, and when you, they do form, they're usually relatively small, but they can still be very dangerous. We saw that with the East IES across much of the Tar Heel State of North Carolina, so folks, you've got to be prepared be in your safe place and i'll tell you what if you've got to go to say like a, a closet or under a stairwell make sure that uh, you can crank up the weather channel we'll give you the very latest let's get right back to mark immediately in the studio yeah and reynolds you're talking about those tornado warnings so i was putting them up on the screen for you let's talk about that right now we have acadia lafayette and vermilion parishes all underneath a tornado warning that is outside of the extreme wind warning the extreme wind warning as i back up here for just a second is all of this area that's for the eye wall outside of that eye wall we have the tornado warning for you this is still a real threat fast moving spin up tornado Tornadoes that will give you very little lead time. You're seeing several of those in here, right? Those are this is the, the motion of those raindrops where the blue and the greens meet up. We have that potential for uh, tornadic activity, and that's why those warnings have been issued. But again, we are moments away from landfall at this point. You see the track there. The center is working its way towards Louisiana, the Louisiana coastline. Laura, a major hurricane knocking on the doorstep of landfall, and so many of you will feel impacts over the next couple of days. We'll be right back. This Labor Day. Welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf, and tonight it is all about Hurricane Laura all the time. Landfall is imminent. Now, we've got crews scattered around much of the Gulf Coast, of course, in much of Louisiana and here in, in the state of Texas. Now, Jim Cantori and Stephanie Abrams, if you've been watching our coverage, you know very well they are in Lake Charles. They've been outside braving the elements, but right now, conditions too dangerous. They've actually moved inside. We have some images that you can see. The camera crews are well protected, and now Stephanie and Jim are doing the same. They've been seeking shelter. We do practice when we preach here on the Weather Channel, and we've got full team coverage for you. Of course, out in the field, Great people behind the camera in our control rooms and the newsrooms giving you the information that is critical, that is crucial to you, your friends, and your family as we go on through. No surprises what we've seen. We expected this to happen, but I'll tell you, still some of the numbers are staggering. You hear the numbers? Uh, I'll tell you. And, and the landfall at this point, it is imminent. It is going to be coming on shore again, a major, major hurricane. We're talking in Category 4, history in the making as it makes its way on shore. And remember, folks, the story does not end right at the water's edge. It's going to continue. And with fast momentum, this system could be making its way all the way inland to places like, get this, Shreveport, Louisiana, well inland, but still with the power of a Category 1 hurricane. Now, with the very latest, for expert analysis, Let's bring Mark Elliott for a moment. Mark, this is an absolute beast. Hard to believe that just a few days ago, this thing was off the just the tip of Cuba. Uh, we have landfall. Let's go to Mark right now. We have it confirmed. We have got it confirmed at this hour. Landfall, Hurricane Laura, moving on shore. Mark. Just, yeah, as of the 1 a.m. advisory, Cameron, we, have a, we have a landfall. Makes landfall near Cameron, Louisiana. And all of the impacts that we were worried about are happening. Catastrophic storm surge, extreme winds along with extreme wind warnings being issued. Flash flooding is happening. Tornadoes are potentially happening. There's been tornado warnings issued. It is all on the table right now. A very dangerous event. Please, uh, you know, shelter if you're still in here as if there is a tornado coming through. That is the best advice that we can give you. Again, 1 a.m. 
official uh, observation and official uh, you know update from the National Hurricane Center has put this as a landfall in Cameron, Louisiana, still 150 mile per hour winds. Let's look at this from a couple of different views here. We have our white line now crossing onto the coast. That is the Cameron area right there. Look at this. You can see just all the fury rotating around this eye, and that's with the Lake Charles area, still about 30 miles north of the center. You can see the views of Lake Charles on your screen right now, but the satellite is showing us, gosh, you are in it. You are in that mix and only increasing from here here for the Lake Charles area for the next few moments. Will you get a break? Will this part of the, you know, the calm center of the eye actually get into Lake Charles? That's still a question. There's a little bit of a wiggle happening off to the west, which may prevent Lake Charles from ever getting into the calm. You may go directly from the northern eye wall to the eastern eye wall and stay in this mess for hours on end. That is a very frightening prospect. Shifting winds of just gargantuan uh, uh, you know, numbers here. Uh, again, Cameron gusting to 121 or so, Lake Charles gusting to 104. We've seen some 127s. Our own Jim Cantori is in Lake Charles right now. Jim, we are going to see these winds continue to increase for you now that landfall has happened outside of Cameron. Yeah, and we're starting to get into that eye wall now, uh, Mark. So with that, you know, just before landfall actually was really interesting. We lost power here. There was plenty of light to look behind us now, but now we've actually lost power. But remember, I've always been on this kind of protected side uh, of La Bears. For some reason, we've always had some kind of northeast wind component that never has allowed to swing it around. But uh, as you're talking about, if we get in that eastern eye wall, the winds have got to go south. All right, and that means they're going to come in from this direction. And they're going to come in hard. Do we get into the eye wall? That's a big question. Uh, obviously, we'll wait and see because this thing still kind of wobbles. There's so much momentum and mass moving with this thing. It does wobble even after uh, a little bit of land falling through here. And sometimes that wobble makes all the difference to the world, Mark, as you know, uh, getting in and out of uh, the eye wall. It's kind of interesting. Uh, the rain seems to have subsided a hair for some So maybe there's a little bit of a break before we really get into the hammering part of that eye wall. But, uh, you know, we're obviously set. I got my camera in back uh, under everything. Uh, you know, we'll come out here and, and give you what we can. But right now, the winds, at least where I am, not super strong, only because I'm protected. We know we've gusted here in Lake Charles over 100 miles per hour, okay? And that's why uh, we're seeing massive, massive amounts of power outages. Uh, now, I think, getting up around 100,000 customers just in Louisiana alone. Um, we've had very high water, uh, waiting for the water to come up. Uh, at the Calcasieu River. We'll see what happens with that. That's forecast to go to 15.45 feet, which is almost, goodness gracious, it's, it's nearly double the record that they set uh, at about nine and a half feet. So that's pretty incredible there, Mark. Again, gusting over 100 miles per hour here. No power, uh, at least where we are here at La Berge. We'll keep you posted. Uh, let's go back to you in the studio as you continue to analyze this. Uh, a one o'clock a one o'clock landfall from what we're hearing uh, from the hurricane center, one o'clock central time. Over yeah, to you. Yeah, and you're right, Jim, that you are in a little pocket, and I mean a small pocket. Get ready for that rain to come right back in. What Jim was uh, referencing, we had this band come through, and Jim and Stephanie were out there talking to us. They were inside some of this real heavy rain in here. There's a little bit of a window right in this zone that they are standing in at the moment, and then after that comes the meat of the northern eye wall. Once that comes in, the Lake Charles area is going to be in it for quite a while. Let's talk about where those winds are right now because we're getting close to Lake Charles with the hurricane force winds. Uh, the tropical storm force winds now uh, reaching all the way into portions of central Louisiana, 205 miles away from that center. This is a large storm in that way. And so that large amount of wind is moving the water. The storm surge potential is high. Embedded tornadoes, tornado watch all the way until the morning. And so what you're looking at here is the actual motion of those uh, raindrops. And since we're so close to the uh, radar site, this is the radar site, we're getting a real good look at that eye wall at this point. Remember, the, uh, the landfall happened outside of Cameron. Look at some of the winds just aloft as seen in the eye wall, anywhere between 130 to 160, a little bit off the deck, but really, Jim, not that far up. And so some heavy rain is going to push that all the way down. And Stephanie, you've been standing in that at times. Get ready. There's more of that wind on the way. The heavy rain is going to push that all the way down to the surface towards you. 
and I can hear it. I can hear it howling up through the, the rafters up in through here. Uh, you know, we're up 23 stories, not, not where we are, but certainly some of the building, and I can just hear it howling through there. So not surprising, Mark. Uh, we're going to uh, So we're starting to get into some of the heavy rain you just talked about. So that brief break uh, is now over. So here comes the rain again. And interestingly enough, too, uh, you know, like I said, right about the time of landfall, we got just enough wind, uh, about 100 mile an hour in gust, to to, loot, to kick off the power uh, in and around here. Mark, uh, I want you to take, do me a favor, take a look at the the river gauge. I want to see how this this water is really supposed to be coming up uh, pretty quickly here uh, at the Calcasieu River. If you get a chance to do that, because you know, I, I, obviously, while well, I'm out here, I don't have any data, but uh, that's another thing too, because now we're now we're getting this maximum surge potential uh, up here in toward Lake Charles. All right. So Steph, we got Steph back. I think she's moved uh, position, got into a little, little bit of a safer position. Uh, Steph, talk to us. Where are you? Where'd you move? Okay, Jim. So essentially, I just walked up the stairs to be closer to my crew and uh, closer to some protection. As I mentioned at the Weather Channel, it is safety first. It's always been like that. And Cameron. The big question is, uh, do we get the calm like Cameron? 
and that may or may not be the case. It all depends on potentially even a last minute wiggle off to the east. And you'll know it if you're watching us uh, because you'll essentially see if we still have cell, we could lose, we, we could lose cell as well. But it, if we, if we, you know, could show you that, you'll see it calm down. You'll see it calm down everywhere. You'll, you'll even hear the noise uh, be reduction if we get into the eye. It'll, it, it's kind of eerie, to be quite honest with you. There's just a, a, an incredible calm. I remember being in Ike uh, back in 2008 with staff, interestingly enough, in Galveston, when uh, there was smoke from fires that got moved in with the eye. You could literally hear birds and even crickets. I mean, that's how calm and eerie uh, it was. All right, so, Steph, talk to me about, uh, you know, you moved from the back to the front. Are, are you outside? Are you looking outside? Uh, give us an idea of what you're seeing right now. <laughs> can, so, can you see any trees down at all? So we cannot see trees down. So what we've done, Jim, is we're in a solid concrete structure. And we've all, oh, lights came back on. The lights were going on and off. We have actually tucked back into our concrete structure. Uh, you can see our, our shot there. We're all back in the corner. And uh, I know it's tough to see now because we really don't have light. We're trying to get that for you guys, but of course, um, safety first, and uh, let's see what's happening here. We have some guys that are, uh, looks like they're trying to do a little exploring there, um, but we are tucked back. Actually, I can't feel any wind right now. That's how tucked back I am into the corner. I mean, literally zero wind where I am located here in the corner. Um, we can give you, yeah, we can give you a little shot here. Uh, we just, this is, we're back in a corner here in this huge concrete building, um, and you see, this is where...
direction. They're changing direction as well uh, and coming around a little bit more out of the east versus uh, the east-northeast, which has been uh, so prevalent in through here. But very, very heavy rain, howling winds, gusty winds uh, continue in this area here, guys. Power's been out now for about 30 minutes, uh, and I can't even tell you what's going on back there. All I can do is hear it. Uh, but I, and let's just listen to the wind. Just incredibly ferocious here, uh, right behind me here. So you can see it kind of sweeping on by. We're the building is causing the wind to do weird things. I'm I'm in a spot here where I can actually stand up, but occasionally we do get some gusts that kind of rush uh, under this overhang, which is where I have uh, most of my crew protected here uh, this evening. So yeah, we're into this, and, and you know now we're at the mercy of whatever this eye wall is going to do uh, as it comes up. Yet, and it's good, believe it or not, it's going to get worse. We know that we've had gusts over 120 miles per hour down at Cameron. Uh, we know we've had gusts now uh, almost 110 miles an hour uh, in Lake Charles as well. There is power loss everywhere here uh, as a result of that. One of the things I can't tell you is I don't know how high the water is, okay? Do we have uh, large, large amounts of water uh, that have piled up in this area? That's entirely possible. I, I just don't have any data with me right now. We'll let Mark deal with that back uh, in the studio where he actually can access that data. But it is, you know, just an eerie quiet. It's amazing when you go from, okay, I can kind of see, I can get perspective what's going on out uh, along the drive and into the parking lot, but you lose the lights and then you lose them inside the hotel. You really can't see anything here, nothing. The only chance we have to see something is if we get in the eye. Do we get in the eye to a point where it's calm enough uh, to potentially even see the sky? You know, the, the, the moon's out. Uh, do we get some moonlight down through here? We're going to just have to wait and see. That eye could just be uh, to our west, okay? Uh, it's all depending on those last-minute wobbles. Either way, power is out. We've got tropical storm force wind gusts into the east Texas, southeast Texas. It's been that way for hours. We've got power loss there, too. We've also got them into southwest Louisiana, heading up towards Shreveport. It's going to be a rough early morning for you guys, so batten down the hatches. Here it comes. All right, Steph, Mark, why don't you take it? All right, Jim, um, you know, just looking at the radar, I don't know if you can hear me, we are in the eye wall right now, and we're going to get that eye. It looks like we will get that eye, so we're going to stay up. We shockingly still have power here, perhaps generators kicked in. Um, again, we are tucked back in, so we're safe. We are not uh, at any chance of getting that debris to sweep in where we're located, and when the eye happens, we will be able to go out, and by the way, it looks like a pretty clean eye. What does that mean? 
here in Beaumont, but you're seeing a shot from Lake Charles. You've got Stephanie Abrams and Jim Cantori that have been there. Jim is, uh, again, seeking cover for the time being, but you're getting a shot, again, getting a taste of, of what they've been experiencing, just the relentless fury of this system, which just a matter of days ago was just off the coast of Cuba. It built, it rolled. There was a, some conjecture that it was going to become a major hurricane, and that became the reality at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock this morning came on shore with the fury winds of 150 miles an hour and Cameron, Louisiana. Now I've got the eye. It's making its way through Lake Charles. We practice what we preach the Weather Channel. We want people to be safe and turn off. That's what we're doing right now. I can tell you, we do know that the winds are very strong. We know where it made landfall, but what is even more terrifying at times is what we do not know. We don't know the condition of, of things at the coast the time being. Eventually, the sun is going to come up. Then we have the, the revelation of fact of what exactly we're dealing with in terms of aftermath. And then another part of the story begins, and that is the recovery, the recovery and the rebuild. But right now, we're dealing with the fury of this. We have winds, again, that continue to roar across. When you think about the landscape across much of Texas, Louisiana, Louisiana. Well, and along the coastal plain, it's flat as can be. There's nothing that's going to stop. There's nothing that's going to harness. There's nothing that's going to impede the wind as it rips its way across the landscape. Now, earlier, you may have heard Stephanie and Jim refer to at times, you can actually smell trees. I can tell you from experience, especially when it comes to, to landfalling tropical systems in an area where you have a lot of pine, you have a smell that is it smells like Christmas, and what I'm talking about is these trees get splintered, and you can smell the resin, you can smell the sap, and sure enough, it travels through the air, and it's one of those byproducts, one of those things that, that heightens the senses. Some other things you'll feel or hear a lot of times in the darkness, you'll hear the sounds of those trees. I can tell you right behind me where we happen to be, you've got a hotel. We had a transformer on the top that just exploded a short while ago. No power there. They do have power in the structure that we happen to be in, which is really a, a mind-numbing, but I'm I'm willing to bet that within the next 90 minutes, if not sooner, it's going to go down here too. In fact, by the time the sun does rise, the winds die down, millions of people are going to be waking up to that absence of power. But there are trucks that are waiting at the standby, some amazing crews that are going to work those long hours to get those supplies, those that, that, that power that is so, so important, so critical to people that live here to, to make sense of it all and are trying to get things back to normal. Another thing to think about with the system is we often compare a lot of the trop tropical entities that make their way to the shore. Uh, you'll think about roughly three years ago, you had Harvey, entirely different animal altogether, came on shore with a lot of force, but you'll remember it dropped anchor near Houston, the water piled up, and we remember the scenes in places like Buffalo Bayou, all across much of, of southeast Texas. Now this system, it is going to be a quick mover, but because its momentum is so robust at this time, Okay, wait, let's, we're going to go back. Let's go back to Lake Charles if we can. And right now we've got Jim Cantori. Jim, I know you've taken some uh, precautions. You now have uh, a bit of uh, extra protection, so to speak. Let's get it back to you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, guys. Just trying to continue to, uh, you know, as this thing, this high wall comes through, we just continue to get hammered here with winds over 100 miles an hour. Uh, Jonesy, I don't know if you've seen them increase uh, since then, but uh, give me the word. I, 128, okay, we've had 128 now uh, at Lake Charles. More than likely pressure dropping rapidly here as we get, uh, again, and go through this eye wall and get close to the center. Uh, it's all about the jog here and what we get. But the other thing, too, is the winds have started to come around a little bit more easterly here. Uh, but the howling, the smell of uh, the timber, which is so plentiful here in western Louisiana and, and also into eastern Texas, uh, we're going to lose a lot of this, unfortunately, just because of the wind energy. I mean, you've got pine, which is a soft wood, and it snaps uh, very quickly, especially in the kind of wind gusts that we're going to see. Guys, we are under an extreme wind warning. What does that mean? That's essentially a beefed-up tornado warning uh, over a large area, okay? We're talking about destructive winds for an extended period of time, um, and that's why it goes till 3 a.m. So these are a lot, a lot longer, typically, uh, than what we get, <coughs> excuse me, with, with tornado warnings, okay? Those are about 20 minutes. These can last three hours, and it essentially takes you through the eye wall. So that is for destructive wind, the kind of destructive wind that you see uh, with tornadoes. To me, it's also a tip to you that if you haven't lost power yet, uh, and you get in that warning, you're going to very, very soon, okay? And you may even lose cell service as well, uh, especially given the fact uh, that we get these 120-mile-hour winds. So far, so good, guys, with the cell, um, especially with 128-mile-hour wind gust uh, now at Lake Charles. Just incredible wind coming up this way. Uh, again, a bona fide Cat 3, almost a, or 
you know, almost a cat four uh, with the wind here coming up uh, in toward Lake Charles. The water's piling up. Don't go outside if we get in the eye, guys. We're not done yet. We still have to go through the bottom side of this and potentially here in Lake Charles, the eastern side of this. Over 100,000 without power and climbing rapidly in Louisiana alone. For the last hour, uh, we maxed out about 128, now down to 109 with the gust, but still uh, the damage is done, the water is being pushed, and uh, the water is rising in many, many areas. So the full fruition, the full force of this thing uh, coming into the Lake Charles area and obviously all across southwest Louisiana. If you're just joining us this morning, again, Cameron, Louisiana was landfall officially at 1 o'clock local time. The system continues to pull north. Now, the big question for us here in Lake Charles is, do we get a jog to the west to give us uh, the eastern eye wall, or does it stay on path where we actually get into the eye a little bit here uh, in Lake Charles? But regardless of where that happens, don't be fooled. If you've still got power and you are watching us, you still got to go through the other side of the storm. All right, uh, a lot of us have had to retreat and get some, some technical issues taken care of. Uh, my partner, Stephanie Abrams, uh, is one of those steps. You just had to retreat uh, and, and get inside. Tell us, tell us what's going on over there. Uh, just about a 10 minute walk for me in the Golden Nugget. Yeah, literally a 10 minute walk. So Jim, you know, we're in the back of the building with no protection whatsoever. So we were getting the brunt. Lake Charles gusted to 128, okay? One Do you hear that whistling? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain what that right. is coming up. Gusted to 128, windows were shattering. We were not comfortable. So what we did was we tucked back in. Then we tucked, what happened was it got too bad. They've locked the doors and we're now inside the casino. And that is the wind whistling through the building. And I'm looking right now at the radar. We are in the eye wall. This is the worst part of it. And we're about to get in that eye. I sure hope so. And we don't stay in that eastern eye wall. I think we're going to get into part of the eye here. Um, it, it's going to be a close one. If we do get into the eye, we will then go back outside. But right now, the fact that there's debris flying everywhere, it is not safe for us to be out there. So we're going to stay inside. In fact, they locked those doors so no one can even get out there. And so we'll stay in here, watch the radar, stay safe, and then, Jim, if we get in that eye, it's going to be real close here. We might be kind of half in, half out in Lake Charles. Yep. Yes, it is going to be close. But right now we're in the eye wall, Steph. You can see the debris just flying around. Uh, thank God it's only leaves. But, man, I'm telling you, you know, the other thing, too, about the eye, there's little swirls and little vortices in the eye, and they enhance the wind gusts and obviously uh, the potential of the damage there. And that's what's coming in and on top of us right now. Max gust 128 uh, for Lake Charles. We've been over 100 for the last hour, uh, maybe even longer than that. I, I can't even remember. But either way, the damage is done. Power is out and through here. Uh, enough so, you know, uh, a lot of us are at least in a position to broadcast to you where we can retreat quickly, uh, keep our camera crew and our, our crew as safe as possible. Step decide to go inside, and that's fine. That's a great idea, and I might have to do the same here before not too long. So uh, you can, I mean, the wind, I'm telling you guys, you can hear the wind. You can actually hear the wind actually howling in through here. Uh, I'm going to just step in a little bit uh, to a little bit more comfort because it's still going to come through this overhang uh, either way you like, either way you slice it. But, uh, oof, what a storm going through, you know, a Category 4 hurricane here. And, and even 30 miles inland uh, from where it made landfall, it still has some of the same ferocity uh, that it met the coast with. What we can't see, certainly because of power outages and the time that this came in, is what's happening to the water. We know that we're maximizing the storm surge in many of these areas. And remember, we're going to hold it up in that eastern eye wall because the wind is going to keep pushing it inland. Now that it's come in, it's going to be held up and it's not going to be able to go out. The other thing, too, is remember the fact that we have all this rainwater coming down. So with the rainwater coming down, you know, that's trying to get back out of the Gulf of Mexico, but that's adding to the component and making the water potentially even higher. So, uh, guys, I hope you heeded the warnings because this is exactly what we thought we would get. We just won't know uh, until first light tomorrow just how extensive the damage is and what people here in Lake Charles uh, have been going through. And, Steph, if it's anything like what we're getting out of through here, uh, it's not pleasant. We just happen to be lucky enough to be on high ground right now. Others, not as fortunate. Over to you, Steph. And, and have a little protection, too, right, Jim? I mean, you still have a little bit of protection. Uh, you can hear that whistling of the wind from the backside where we were for all those hours with no protection, just hammering. I mean, it wouldn't be safe for anyone to be out there no matter uh, what you were wearing. So Jim does have a little protection from his building. I just want to give that as an FYI um, because he is standing out in it. And you might have seen my reaction. Another 
Shreveport, Little Rock, uh, Memphis. This is all headed your way. Obviously, its interaction with land is going to slow it down. It's going to tear it apart and whatnot. But it is still, when you have a Cat 4 that's just buzzsawing through, it takes time for that to come down, for it to wind down. You can't. Hello, America. Welcome back to continued coverage of Hurricane Laura. You're taking a look at a live image in Lake Charles. That's right. You're watching this storm cam. And, well, one of the byproducts you often have from a land falling hurricane, you know, you have rising water. And that is what we're seeing. Exhibit A in Lake Charles. And this is just a small sample we're going to be seeing across much of the region that could be affecting millions of people, not only, not only in Louisiana, but even into parts of Texas. Welcome back, everyone. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf, Kearney from Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, Texas, for the time being, dealing with uh, occasional bouts of wind and some rain that has been kind of kind of a pulsing effect. It's almost like a breathing organism. You have an inhale and an exhale. Uh, every now and then, a flash of lightning here and there. We do have a light that keeps on flashing back and forth. That is not the lightning. If we didn't have any lightning, we'd be seeking cover. By the way, Jim Cantori and Stephanie are seeking cover at this point. It's all about safety at the Weather Channel. And the key takeaway, if you'd want watching their incredible narrative this evening about what has been coming from Hurricane Laura. They are experiencing parts of the eye wall, the ferocity of it. Mark, I got to tell you one thing, it's Stephanie, gosh almighty, when she was inside the building, you could hear that that piercing wail. Yeah. That was the voice of Hurricane Laura. I mean, what an, what an eerie, eerie thing to consider. Mark, can you please, for, for the sake of our viewers who may be tuning in across much of the region, uh, I'm sure there may be some confusion because you've got a lot of folks that are moving here. They may not be so so uh, weather savvy when it comes to the tropics. Landfalling system, but a tornado threat. Absolutely. Can you share that with them? Yeah, you know, that is very common with landfalling tropical systems. Because of how the winds change with height, you get enough spin through the atmosphere that we do have a tornado threat, and that's largely featured in these outer rings, and we'll get to that in just a second because we do have some tornado warnings popping up off to the east. What I want to talk to you about first is this presentation on the infrared satellite. This is a very well-formed storm, maybe a little bit of a wiggle off to the west. What that could mean for those of you watching in Lake Charles is that even as we may get into part of the eye and get a brief calm, don't go outside. Don't expect this to be a long duration break as you may very quickly wind up on the eastern side of the eye and wind up in that eastern eye wall. Now, uh, this is a view of the radar, but the radar is actually coming all the way from Houston. Both the Lake Charles and the Fort Polk radars are not currently operable. Maybe a communication issue from the Lake Charles office, which remember, if you were watching earlier today, that office was left because it was not safe. And so to continue that, Reynolds, there is a tornado warning off to the east. Tornado warning continues for Iberia, Lafayette, and St. Martin until 2.15. Fast moving spin up tornadoes, very common in these landfalling systems. Hey, Mark, another question for you. Right now, we've been talking so much what happened uh, down in, in places like Cameron as it made its way into Lake Charles. Right now, we've been talking so much about Lake Charles, understandably so, but can you tell our viewers what they can expect farther upstream? Because we know the story is not stopping there. We're going to follow this uh, for days to come. Upstream, places like DeRitter, spots like, say, uh, my Shreveport. What, yeah. When do you think we can expect as we make our way forward in the next several hours? All right, so right now, it's all about Lake Charles because that eye wall is approaching, but it's not going to stop stay there, right? This is not just an event that stays at the coast and ends. This is going to be hurricane force winds that goes much further inland, approaching the western towns uh, west of Alexandria by morning. It's going to take the next several hours to go from Lake Charles to somewhere west of Alexandria. Now, this is just one model. I'm using it to give you the flavor, what to expect with these winds. And you can see the wind scale up here, that there could still be 85 to 95 plus gusts associated with this storm. Okay, these are significant, significant wind gusts. Now, a, a little bit more wiggle room as we look towards this, uh, you know, time frame towards tomorrow afternoon. There are some models that bring this center very close to Shreveport, others that are basically near Monroe. This one, we're splitting the difference. We're going in between. But look at that, Reynolds, this is 85 mile per hour gusts around that, uh, that eye still by noon tomorrow. And then we go all the way to Little Rock, Reynolds, by the time we get into tomorrow night. Gosh, this is going to be a long duration event. There could be wind damage all the way through Arkansas with this easily through the day tomorrow. Hey, we're going to commercial break real fast. I want to ask you one more question. For the benefit of our viewers that may be tuning in from the Northeast and the Ohio Valley, they may see this and say, oh, this is a world away. Mm. This
this could be going into parts of, say, the Ohio Valley of the Northeast. Is that correct? Absolutely. Let's take a look at the, the official forecast track as issued by the National Hurricane Center. This is our latest track as issued uh, by our friends down at the center. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about winds that do spin down at least briefly, but you see this big curl on off towards the north uh, and north and east. This is a meeting up with a cold front. This front is going to be sweeping what's left of Laura off the coast and away. But at that same point, high pressure starts to build in. And so you have the low from the remnants from our storm and high pressure to the north. High pressure going this way, low pressure going this way. Gosh, we could have an onshore flow, a squeeze play, a very strong wind event into portions of the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. So do not put your guard down on the system. Do not turn your back on Laura is the bottom line here, as we could have very strong winds going all the way across the Appalachian chain and Reynolds into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast through this weekend. It went from a whisper to a roar. Lake Charles, Louisiana, you're seeing this video here. Now you can't see wind, but you can sure see what it pushes around. This is a very heavy several ton satellite truck being rocked by intense winds compliments of Hurricane Laura. Hard to believe this system was in the tropics just a little over a week ago. A puff of clouds here and there then brought some heavy rain to our territory of Puerto Rico, continue to make its way across the northern Caribbean. It made its way to the Gulf of Mexico and then exploded in power to a major hurricane, made landfall if you're just tuning in. That's right, made landfall in Louisiana at Cameron, Louisiana at 1 o'clock this morning, local time, and now we are still feeling its fury. This system, my goodness, this is something that we're going to be talking about for years and years to come. And I can guarantee you that as a meteorologist, you know that things like this can happen. You know it can't be the stuff of nightmares, but you hope it never occurs. But this is the reality we're dealing with this morning. Welcome back, everyone. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf. You're watching continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. It is all about Hurricane Laura. It truly is. And we're going to watch this story affecting so many people. Uh, I got to tell you, from this uh, vantage point where I've been, we've seen here in Beaumont some interesting things. Every now and then you hear snapping of trees off in the distance. We had, I want to say, about an hour and 15 minutes ago, a loud pop off in the distance. To be honest with you, with the darkness, it doesn't reveal what the source was. Could have been a blown transformer, could have been a down tree, could have been both. We, we have no idea. That revelation will come with the morning light. What we do know is that we've got power outages. Our building where we happen to be, where we have Van Trailer uh, right there safely in a good spot. Uh, right now, our, our building has power. I don't expect that to stay that way. More power outages are going to be a guarantee. And I can tell you that you've got crews that are just waiting right now at the ready, resting because, goodness sakes, the job they've got ahead of them. Let's bring in Mark Elliott for a moment. And, Mark, in terms of the winds here, I think that the strongest we've had, maybe some gusts up to 40, 45, but I know that the strongest still on the way. Back to you, Mark. Yeah, there is a lot of wind still to come with this system. We are not done by any stretch. In fact, the newest advisory just issued from the National Hurricane Center, 2 a.m. update for everybody. 140 miles per hour, still a strong Cat 4. We've lost a whopping 10 miles per hour with those winds as this continues to move inland. So yes, landfall took place a little over an hour ago. Uh, now, uh, 140 miles per hour, 10 miles southwest of Lake Charles for that center point. And there is still at least some question, does Lake Charles get into that center? Does it get into the eye when all is said and done? Let's take a look here as we zoom in onto the path of this storm. From the satellite, it certainly looks like we're going to get at least a window where Lake Charles gets a bit of a break from the wind. But Remember that satellite's coming down at an angle, and we've turned that even a little bit farther. Uh, you can see that the eastern eye wall is actually still cranking. That e that right side, that eastern eye wall has all the onshore flow, has all that action with it. It is going to be a beast of a time on that eastern side. And Lake Charles, even if you wind up getting a little bit of a break, you're going to be on that east side. So I, I, I bring this up again because I don't want people to get complacent, to say, whew, everything's calm. We can go outside and check out the damage, check out what occurred, because we know there's damage. We've seen it firsthand. That debris is going to get picked up, blown around, thrown around, and so be careful in the Lake Charles area. Uh, Reynolds reporting to us from Beaumont. He's on that western side, uh, seeing banding features coming through. Uh, we go uh, off to the eastern side farther, and we have some tornado warnings to tell you about as well. Iberia, Lafayette, and St. Martin still under a tornado warning until 2.15. There is at least a chance of these quick spin-up tornadoes. These things are really moving a couple of different spots of rotation north of New Iberia. So Reynolds, this is a, a wind event in southwest Louisiana.
Louisiana and eastern Texas. Tornado event continuing. A new update on that warning just popping up, but same storm. Gosh, this is going to be a, just a bear for the next several hours in Louisiana tomorrow and really through the day today into tomorrow going all the way through Arkansas. You know, it's like something out of Greek mythology, like a hydra. We're talking about a creature that has got a variety of heads, so, so many threats. If we can, can we talk a little bit more about the, the about the tornado? Well, the wind picking up a little bit more now. Uh, can we talk a little bit more about the, the tornadic threat? You know, Mark, we always look, compare, contrast tropical systems and what they've done in the past and try to apply that knowledge to the present and then to the future. Recently, we had East Aeas, mm -hmm. and, and we had the tornadic activity that struck the Carolinas. I mean, there's still there, there are places that are going to take a while still to clean up at this point. But when it comes to these landfalling tropical systems and these tornadoes, uh, they are typically small, but they can be just as destructive, can't they? Oh, absolutely. They are still tornadoes. And you know what? What's interesting is each landfalling system is different. People may say, oh, well, we've gone through. We've gone through a hurricane already. We've gone through Rita. Rita had 90 tornado warnings, almost to this, you know, a slightly weaker storm when it came ashore. It's almost the same size, almost the same location, and yet 90 tornado warnings. We haven't seen this be a, uh, you know, prolific tornado producer yet. There's still time for that. These tropical tornadoes, they often these embedded supercells in the outer bands as the system comes on shore, and then really lasting for the the path of the storm along that path and off to the east. Land interaction plays a bit of a way. Uh, a role in that and Reynolds through the day today all the way to Little Rock maybe to Memphis and Jackson a threat of tornadoes as well. Mark uh, impeccable work man thanks so much for making the complex understandable I'll, I'll tell you we got a long night ahead and you know who's been dealing with the long night so far the great people in Lake Charles Louisiana as we find Stephanie Abrams Stephanie uh, I know you guys have been battered about you're dealing with the with the eye wall can you give it the slightest of what you've had over say the last 10 minutes or so? Okay, so what we did is we were inside for our last live shot because they locked all the doors. We found one door they let us come out of, um, and we're now in the garage, in the parking garage. Did you hear all that? That is damage being done right now. Uh, we're safe. We're literally in the back corner of the parking garage, and what I'm doing here is I'm patiently waiting for those winds to drop. We are getting in the eye of this system, and so it'll be momentarily that the winds will drop, and we'll be able to go outside.
Houston because the Lake Charles radar is down. And so we're not getting the clearest uh, view of you know exactly where you are with regards to the eye. There's a little bit of a tilt involved. What I think might happen, Steph, is you'll have you know you know maybe minutes, not hours, in that eye before the eastern edge catches up to you. And so you got to be real careful. All of a sudden, those winds are going to come screaming south and north again. And you hear all the destruction that's happening, right? So now all that debris that's been ripped apart with this first eye wall is now free to easily fly. Not just like, oh, you know, we have more to rip off. You have now these huge chunks of debris that can easily go flying. And that's why that second eye wall is a lot more dangerous. Um, and so that's what we'll be watching for. We'll probably have to, you know, be inside or maybe be at this location for the second eye wall because there's just absolutely too much debris, let alone the winds that have, um, I'm blanking, uh, what do we guess to, 132? Sorry, there's been a lot happening tonight here. I wrote it down. 132, right. Sustained at 98, gusting to 132. So my memory, my memory was still with me, um, shockingly. So one First, take us back before we push forward and show you where we are seeing those heavy rain bands right now. We have a tornado uh, watch as well as a tornado warning, not necessarily here in town, but that tornado watch is including Jefferson County. So our friends that continue to monitor the situation in their neighborhood around Port Arthur as well as Beaumont, there is a tornado watch for your area, at least for the next several hours until the system uh, drifts farthest to the north where you're no longer in that problem zone. This morning around 1155, this is what Doppler radar captured of Laura. You can see the center of circulation still offshore. Here's Cameron, Louisiana. And then as we push forward, you can see that eye completely crossing Cameron Parish there, the city of Cameron, and then pushing northward. At this hour, the center of circulation is now currently over Lake Charles. We've got very breezy conditions now. It looks like we may not be seeing clouds here, but definitely breezy and windy conditions. Not quite as strong of those wind gusts that we experienced earlier this morning. Peak wind gusts around Lake Charles being reported close to 130 miles per hour that reported from the airport there. Uh, Laura making landfall as a category four hurricane winds near 150 miles per hour. The latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center now it continues to move toward the north at 15 miles per hour and will continue that movement. We're not anticipating this slowing down anytime soon. Uh, that is the good news. Unfortunately, because it is such a wide and large storm, it is going to take a while before the storm Weekends. It is still a category four storm with maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour and the uh, reaches of the tropical storm force winds, including the hurricane force winds are still over. The hurricane force winds are about 70 miles uh, from the center. Meanwhile, those tropical storm force winds are still from the center of circulation, a good 175 miles out. So it's far reaching those strong tropical storm wind gusts. Now we're starting to see the northern fringes of this eye wall impacting areas like uh, De Quincey as uh, far north as Maryville and then bringing it in a little bit closer toward Beaumont and Rose City just to the east of Beaumont down toward Port Arthur, the city of Orange. They're going to continue to experience these outer rain bands from Laura for the next several hours. These are the areas that are going to be in that flash flood prone areas, including the possibility of tornadoes. We've got tornado watches in effect. Most of those tornado watches, uh, the tornado watch box is including uh, much of Cameron Parish and the Calcutchew area, uh, but we are seeing some of those uh, tornado watches also extending into uh, Texas. Now, until three o'clock this morning, there is an extreme wind warning. So if we're ever, if our area is ever in an in extreme wind warning, uh, you'll know that those winds are over 115 miles per hour and you want to treat it like there is a tornado warning in our area, meaning that you have to seek shelter in the interior room, uh, the safest room in your house away from any sort of windows. And this is what folks in this area are being advised to do. So between Cameron and uh, Lake Charles, uh, that extreme wind warning in effect until about three o'clock. Give you a wider view of the Doppler radar. I'm 
mention, this is a large storm. Those rains extending from the Sour Lake area along this uh, western fringes and just passing the uh, Alexandria area. Some of these rain bands will be pushing out toward New Orleans as we get into the latter half of the morning and into the afternoon. And these tornado watch boxes, including more than a dozen counties here in Louisiana and also a couple counties closer to, to home. So we've got Jefferson as well as uh, Harding County in that. Already seeing some tornado warnings this morning. Here's this magenta polygon indicating tornado warning until three o'clock with some of these feeder bands that are getting fed into the storm and coming in from the Gulf. So we're gonna be dealing with several of these tornado warnings as we move forward in the morning, most of which of course will be in the Louisiana area. Uh, Flash flood warnings also in effect, uh, starting to watch that with those water levels along some of those rivers around, uh, we'll be monitoring some of those water levels around Calcasieu Lake. Of course, that is uh, the lake and the waters that feed into the Lake Charles area and we'll be uh, bringing some inundation, just some devastation as far as those water levels, uh, those winds pushing all of that water into the Lake Charles area as we move forward in the morning. And really over the next four to five hours, as we start to get some daylight, we'll be able to see what Laura has brought to that area. For us, we um, spared, of course, from the worst. We're seeing the dry side or the clean side is like as we like to call it. And it's just such a stark difference from what I just showed you on the radar and what is happening and unfolding across Louisiana and what is happening with us. And to think, you know, just a couple of days ago, not really knowing whether or not that cone of uncertainty was going to move over the Boulevard or uh, Galveston area. We could be on those western fringes. Uh, our friends out in Beaumont and Port Arthur that are experiencing that rain, that ongoing rain and winds this morning, that could have been us here in Houston and Brazoria County and Fort Bend County. But that system made that turn last night. I know many of us were, were waiting with a bated breath. Okay, it's still out of the Northwest and of of course, as meteorologists, you know, people ask us, when is it going to make that turn? And, and really, you know, we can put all the data into, you know, computers and get all the data from the hurricane hunters, but ultimately mother nature, you know, you, you got to see what, what, what happens with these storms and how uh, the storms are being steered. And it made that turn a little after five o'clock last night to the north. And then we knew at that point, okay, uh, we can finally take, you know, that breath. And uh, here you can see some of those outer rain bands impacting Coons, Jefferson County, uh, Beaumont, Port Arthur, the city of Orange this morning. Unfortunately, this is going to be the story this morning, just ongoing rains and also those strong winds. We've been showing you some of these wind gusts this morning. Uh, some of those peak wind gusts in the far eastern parts of our viewing area, Beaumont, Port Arthur, we've seen those gusts 80, 90, even 100 miles per hour. They have weakened some. You're seeing sustained winds right now in Liberty County between 20 and 30. Winnie Chambers County, you're in that 20 to 30, even close to 40 mile per hour gust, so not bad. You get closer here uh, toward the center of circulation and in Jefferson County, uh, the color here changes from Beaumont at 60, 65 mile per hour gusts, and then a dramatic change down in Port Arthur. We've lost our sensor there, our observation site in Port Arthur, but just telling that color, you're, pro you're most likely, if you're in that area, you're experiencing wind gusts above 80 miles per hour, still under a hurricane warning for East Texas, portions of East Texas and that the Western counties of Louisiana. Also, storm surge warnings were we're not out of the woods yet. The next several hours, we could still be dealing with some significant storm surge flooding along Galveston and Boulevard Peninsula. I mean, yesterday, one of my favorite, uh, you know, one of my favorite beaches, all water, just inundation of water, overlapping of water, and we're going to continue uh, to see that throughout the morning. And once, uh, you know, the sun rises and hopefully we get some daylight, if we can get, you know, our drone out there or at least uh, sky eye since the weather is communicating for us on, on this side of town, 
We'll, able to, we'll be able to see uh, what those waves, what the Gulf has done to our coastline. But storm surge flooding still a possibility, so the warnings continue. We're still looking at anywhere between two to four feet above ground when it comes to that water inundation. And then you can see the track. The track of this system will continue to accelerate. Still a Category 2 hurricane this morning, and then weakening to a tropical storm as it accelerates toward the Tennessee River Valley here. It is going to produce some very heavy rain and strong winds in this area. On talking about uh, this category four storm hitting uh, Cameron Parish and we can only imagine the damage there. I know now the sun is up. We'll have to wait and see when the winds die down. Maybe they can get some drones or helicopters to fly in just to see how bad it is. But landfall was in Cameron at one o'clock this morning with 150 mile per hour winds it was forecast to have a storm surge around 15 to 20 feet out there in the Cameron area. And historically, this is now tied for the strongest hurricane in Louisiana that matching that of the last island hurricane back in 1856. So it's been a number of years obviously uh, since we've seen that one coming on in so it's just incredible to see how powerful Laura was now it's still a fairly large hurricane but still much weaker as it works its way here about 20 miles north of Fort Polk winds are down to 100 miles per hour moving north at 15 and you can see here the eye is kind of collapsing a little bit there's so that circulation center will stay of course uh, but not near as wide as it was 25 to 35 mile per hour mile wide eye at one point as it worked its way right over Cameron right over Lake Charles and now continuing to be just off near the Alexandria area. You can see there's a center of circulation south of Natchitoches right now near the Fort Polk area north of there as they just took the brunt of the eye moving right over top of Fort Polk. But the weather is improving in Lake Charles and down to Cameron. The rain's kind of coming to an end there, but still very windy and likely the flooding will persist. One other area we're watching very closely for some flooding is this rain bank coming up from Morgan City, Donaldsonville through Baton Rouge heading to Jackson, Louisiana, where severe weather is breaking out up there now. This has been persistent over the last couple of hours, and unfortunately that is heading our way. A new band kind of forming out ahead of it. Both of these will work the way into the New Orleans area later today, and they could bring us very heavy rain and possibly uh, some flooding issues as well, too, because we haven't got much rain. Didn't get much from Marco. Didn't get a lot of rain in the city northward yesterday. City off to the east and or rather west and southwest got pretty good rain, uh, but uh, we are about to get some of this through the area a little later this morning. Tornado watch remains in effect till 8 o'clock to our west, too. This one will likely be expanded north and maybe include part of the North Shore as the tornado threat continues to work its way northward today. Now the hurricane will work its way north up towards Shreveport and heading up towards this afternoon and then eventually Memphis as we get into Friday afternoon before it works its way all the way to DC and then heading out to the Atlantic Ocean where it could strengthen a little bit. May not be a tropical system, but maybe like a nor'easter type system out there with some strong winds and very heavy rain heading over toward Nova Scotia. Now look at some of these winds. Downtown Lake Charles, 137 mile per hour wind gust there. Lake Charles Regional Airport, the main airport there, uh, 134 mile per hour wind gust. Cameron, Louisiana gusted to 127. Uh, La Cassine Ref Refuse there right around 95 mile per hour in Alexandria had a wind gust recently of 85 miles per hour. So incredible winds back here. You can see closer to home. We do have uh, winds gusting to 36 in Kenner, 30 at Lakefront, 23 Slidell, 29 in Hammond. Quite windy Baton Rouge area as well too. Then you go over towards say Alexandria sustained at 54 gusting to 74 now. Fort Polk 29 gusting to 47 gusting to right around 51 to Quincy Lake Charles sites are down, likely because of loss of power. Natchitoches, you can see gusting to 56 miles per hour there. Uh, Lafayette gusting to 43 and 46 down in New Iberia. So still incredible uh, winds still coming from the system. Now we still have high water likely here from the Mississippi Sound across the North Shore and the South Shore. The water levels around one to three feet across Lake Pontchartrain, likely flooding issues near Laplace Line Highway 51, which we usually see with high water and storm surge warning down along the coastline. Eastern facing shore of Plaquemines Parish one to three. West Western facing shore all the way to Morgan City, four to seven feet potentially there, and eight to twelve once you go from Morgan City off to the west. Now, high tide again this morning is in Grand Isle at 6 a.m. Right around I-10 at Slidell around 11 a.m. in Shell Beach around 8 a.m. this morning. So we're getting into the high tide levels right now. Now, what we're expecting across our area today, one to five inches of rain, some flooding issues. There are the tide surge levels. The winds around 20 to 30 and along the inland areas, 30 to 40 along the coastline, and that tornado threat again still a possibility for us. We need to be aware of that. There you see the rain totals here again. We're talking about two, three, four, 
four or five inches of rain potentially across southeast Louisiana over the next couple days, but most of that will likely fall today. So a flash flood watch is in effect till seven o'clock this evening. So be aware we are going to continue looking for that flooding threat and the tornado threat, which will work its way northward here. So as the storm moves to the north, that threat moves to the north, but we could see some weak brief tornadoes out there. Well, this is what's left of Laura here in Baltimore. Going to head out to sea. Not much wind with it. A little bit, but not much. Yeah, this caused a lot of trouble down there in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And it's supposed to go all out into the Atlantic and maybe reform into another tropical storm. Who knows? The waters out there is warm enough, so we'll have to wait and see, but um, yeah. <sighs> this is what's left of Laura. For now. <laughs> I hate getting my fingers in the way. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> 